So, this is uh, Mike Camp sitting here with UFC fighter Ryan LaFlair, and we're going to be discussing Ryan's comeback from multiple injuries, and we're trying to let showcase people. We always see like, the rise of the athlete into their realm of top level fighting, level of whatever sport they're playing, and we never get to see what goes on when a fighter or an athlete suffers an injury. It goes on mentally, their comeback, and um, we're just trying to explain to people that everything is there's ups and downs, and the mental training and the physical training that an athlete goes through to get back to that level to become the best in the world. And um, Ryan's been through, can you just tell about what injuries you've had over the past two years? Um, two years, uh, well, I've had herniated this in my neck, um, which uh, my good friend Mike can has helped me out here. Um, not just herniations, but I had, you know, some, some nerve uh, injury. My whole arm deflated, my lat deflated, my pec deflated, so I had to rebuild my entire right side of my body. Um, came back from that, got a couple good fights in. Uh, tore uh, the ligaments in my wrist that hold all the bones together. So I had to get uh, reconstructive wrist surgery. Um, what year was that one? That was in 2010. Okay, and then as you were rehabbing the wrist? I uh, rehabbed the wrist. Uh, it took about nine to ten months to get back uh, you know, full strength before, you know, because obviously it's not the original ligament, so you have to strengthen everything around it because it's not as strong, obviously. So I, another thing I used uh, Dr. Mike Camp here for. Uh, I came back, booked a fight. I mean, less than two weeks later, tore my ACL. Uh, full tear, full thickness tear in my right ACL. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Definitely uh, discouraging as far as professionally. I uh, had to rethink if this is what I wanted to do, uh, you know, because I was already out fighting for a year. This is going to set me out another year, so you know, I'm, gonna, I'm taking a big, big step back. So now we're two years out from fighting. Yep. Two years out from fighting. What I did, I, uh, I really focused uh, on, on the mental edge of the sport. Uh, I started coaching a lot. I opened a gym up in Long Island. Uh, obviously, the entire time been doing working on strength. And, What's uh, the name of that gym? Uh, Long Island MMA. Okay. Um, I started. Uh, you know, the entire time I was out, I've been working with Dr. Mike Camp, uh, working on not only just from strengthening my right knee, but strengthening my left knee, my my glutes, my hamstrings, my quads, my chest, everything. Cause, you know, one thing he showed me is that the body works as a whole. So if one thing is injured on one side. Uh, you know, the rest of your body favors it, and that's how you, uh, you know, create more injuries. So. Let's talk about like when you did get injured. Like, what was the lowest point? Like, did you ever think like, hey, I'm done fighting. Or, I can't do this. I'm just gonna work on my business. Like, how did you keep focused on? Like, what made you say I'm gonna stay in the game and get back to the like, MMA and UFC? Uh, you know, I, I don't think it ever it ever left. You know, I talked about it, but I, you know, there was too much unfinished unfinished business. Uh, I was undefeated. I was you know, one of the the highest prospects. And, you know, country uh, so much to live up to I couldn't just walk away uh, obviously it was discouraging with the injuries uh, and you know especially you got young up-and-coming fighters coming uh, coming to my gym like Dennis Bermudez and uh, you know watching him just you know just crush it as soon as he uh, you know got the opportunity give me some uh, inspiration to get back in there and show uh, show what I'm all about now you're an athlete your whole life you play you cross you wrestle, so your mind focus has always been pretty strong at right? Right. And uh, how about your support team? Like, you know, who do you, just do your, you know, I know you're married, and you know, she has a good support system at home, right. family, everyone, did anyone ever kind of say, Ron, maybe you should this up, or are they all behind you and say, you know what, Ryan, keep pushing, you got this, and... Um, yeah, that's, that, that, that's good that you brought that up, because I think that's the most important thing when it comes to fighting. Um, it's not like uh, wrestling or lacrosse, where, you know, you can take the loss, you can accept that someone's better than you, uh, fighting is, is one of those sports that, you know, it's a fight, you know, that's pretty much, you're, you're putting your pride on the line. So the fact that you have a, a good support team is very important. Um, obviously my wife backed me up 100%. The people who don't support me are people who don't really know that much about the sport, doesn't know what I put into it. My wife is, you know, is there every day. She sees what I go through every day. She sees the injuries I come home with and she, every day, she knows that, you know, there's no way that anybody, you know, could work harder than me or anybody deserves more. Obviously my coach is Keith Tremble. Uh, Mike Camp, Tony Ricci, um, Greg Pasquale, these guys, you know, they all believe in me. And if your coaches don't believe in you, then, you know, maybe you should look at having a different camp. Because even when I was out for two years, Keith Trimble, you know, could be training other great you know, up-and-coming fighters, but he, you know, always stuck to my guns, never left me, always, you know, stuck behind my back. And same thing with Greg Pasquale. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely the most important thing, I think. Uh, All right, so let's jump forward now. We, you know, we've got trying to contract sign with Strikeforce. 
Strike Force was taken over by Dana White in the UFC, right? right? right. Obviously, they saw the talent in Ryan LaFleur, and uh, Ryan had his first UFC fight and was won. Uh, my first UFC fight was April 2013. Okay, and victorious? And so, yep. I, uh, it's funny, I took that fight, uh, and I fought in, uh, in January, uh, that January. That was my comeback fight after two and a half year layoff. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I dominated the fight. I was a little rusty uh, as far as, you know, conditioning, just, you know, just getting back into it. Um, but I went for a, a certain submission move where I actually ended up tearing my own LCL and sprained my ACL in my left leg, obviously. Uh, it was just something I finally forced on myself. It wasn't even an accident, and I did it, you know, I did it myself, so I can't even blame anybody but myself. Uh, I get home, I, you know, I get signed. Uh, a, a big organization signed me for a big four-fight deal. It was to be a... Uh, uh, one of the headliners on, on uh, the World Series of Fighting. So I booked a fight, they wanted me to fight two, uh, like maybe four weeks later. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take the fight, why not? Even though my knee was messed up, I couldn't pass up any opportunity because uh, the injuries are bad. Um, maybe a week later, the UFC calls me, asks me to, uh, asked me to, uh, to fight. I said, absolutely. You know, so before in April, had a great victorious victory. Before in April, I, uh, my knee was still banged up. I, uh, I, I ended up tearing some stuff in my shoulder. Uh, of course, you know, the story of my life. Uh, I ended up taking this, the, the fight anyway. Uh, you know, no way I was backing down. Fought with the in through the injuries. It wasn't my uh, most exciting victory, but got the win. Uh, got my shoulder fixed up. Got some surgery. Got the uh, got my uh, clavicle scoped out. And then uh, was able to get a full training camp in for my, for my next fight, uh, which was November 9th in, uh, in Brazil. Okay, uh, All right, so Ryan had a shoulder injury to tear. He had surgery on that. And uh, when did they first ask you to do the, um, what was the fight we just had four weeks ago in November? Yeah, I, I had a full training camp for that. They gave okay. me about 12 weeks notice. Um, I felt I was... You know, just coming off that shoulder injury, I just got the okay from the doctor to start training. Okay. I uh, felt, I mean, I thought it was perfect. I felt great. It was, you know, no, nothing wrong with me. I had, you know, I started my camp out. I went down to Florida. I went down and trained with the Black Zillions, uh, some of the best fighters in the world uh, out of there. And uh, started, you know, did two weeks out there. Felt great. Came home, felt healthy. The first time I actually went through a fighting camp and uh, training camp and felt 100% healthy and actually got all the work in. I started working with Tony Ricci. Um, and uh, in my camp, and they, they you know, they, they scheduled, they put together a good program for me to try, kind of stay healthy through that, the whole camp, which was good because sometimes strength coaches, um, they kind of they, they want to be more of an impact and they kind of put you through a little more grueling workouts than you really need. Uh, so you know, we sat down and figured out something really good and it helped me out. I felt great going to that fight, and uh, and it showed. And here we are, one weekend, about two weeks after your next fight. What was that going to be? Uh, my next fight is uh, December 14th uh, in Sacramento against Court McGee, uh, UFC on Fox 9. I, um, yeah, I, ca I got home from Brazil on, uh, I fought on the 9th, I got home on the 11th, and they called me on the 12th to fight, <laughs> to fight uh, on the, the following month on the 14th. And I, I had one month notice, and uh, I thought about it for about, I don't know, 17 minutes, 18 minutes. <laughs> And I, I tried calling my coaches, you know, to see if I get their opinion. I couldn't really get a hold of any of them. I called my manager back and said, hey, you know what? There's no reason why I shouldn't take this fight. You know, I was a little dinged up. My shin was a little banged up. But nothing that, you know, a, week, a week's rest wouldn't help. And uh, here I am, ready to go. Okay, do you visualize, like, all the upcoming fights? Like, you know, you're all friends with Chris Weidman. Right. And he always talks about how he visualized from such a young age he was going to be a world champion. Do you do that too, Ryan? Or you just kind of uh, go through each fight? Yeah, no, I mean, I think me and Chris are a little bit different as far as uh, the way we look. I mean, I, I think we both have champions uh, mentalities, mm -hmm. um, you know, but he was, you know, an outstanding wrestler, just outstanding at, you know, all this, everything he did. So, he, I mean, he couldn't, you know, him settling for anything less than that was, you know, almost like, like he wasn't accomplishing his goals or wasn't made out to what he, he should be. So what's uh, with, your goal? With me, uh, no, my goal is to be the best in the world. Uh, with me, I feel like I always have to prove everybody wrong. You know, I was never the best wrestler. I was, you know, definitely above average. I was never the best lacrosse player, but I always, you know, wanted to, wanted to be the best. So I wanted wanted to prove everybody wrong. I wanted to show everybody that I could be the best. And I think that, you know, you know, especially even with fighting, I don't, have, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the strongest, but you know, I fight with a lot of heart. I fight with, uh, I train my ass off, um, and you know, I take one fight at a time. I can't, 
say, hey, I want to be champion because I still have to prove to myself that I, you know, that I need to be champion. Do fighters think about like a time frame? Okay, like, you know, two years from now I want to be in this type of fight. Is it a year frame or is it just moving through each fight, impressing the UFC and getting yeah. the opportunities as they come? Yeah, I think, I mean, I can't speak for everybody else. Um, I fight one fight, you know, one fight at a time. You know, I, I, I'm looking at one fight. And when I, right before I go out in the fight, one thing I say is like, I don't care what happens to me. And this is my last fight ever. I don't care if I break my, everything in my face. I, just, you know, I gotta get through this fight, and I'll worry about that after. I'll worry about the injuries afterwards. So like, I can't, I'm like, oh well, I got my elbow's a little messed up. You know, don't go into this fight, and you know, watch out for your elbow because you might have another big fight after this. Um, I, I could be wrong. Um, you know, obviously I've had big injuries, but uh, I'm also, you know, I like to win. I think that's the most important thing to me. Awesome. And I think on that note, it's a great place to end is, you know, showing what Ryan has come through for the past three years, his mentality, his mindset of explaining that he's always been focused, getting back to the ring, proving himself, becoming out the best fighter in each time and never leaving anything in that octagon and putting it all on the line for each fight. Um, again, want to give a shout out to me, Ryan? Or? I just wanted to, you know, give out my coaches, my training camp, Belmore Kickboxing, all around MMA. Um, my, uh, my camp, uh, Tony Ricci, Chris Algieri, and uh, my competitive life uh, going on strength and performance. They do the Dennis Bermudez um, and uh, that Greg Pasquale. Yeah, and people don't realize, a lot of people don't realize how many people are involved in an athlete. And it's a big thing that always goes missed is, you know, we always see the rise of the athlete. And the true coaches, you just stay in the background. You know, we just want the athlete to succeed and reach their potential. And that's what a good coach is always about, part of a team. And uh, with that, Ryan. Best luck in the week. I think you're going to be victorious. Thanks, and, uh, I believe in you. Everyone else believes in you. And uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. <laughs>